War driving has been around for decades, but it's only gotten easier as technology has improved to the point that you can get started with a simple smartphone. Today, we'll show you how to map and explore the security of every network you walk or drive by on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. War driving works by combining Wi-Fi signal strength information with the GPS information from your smartphone. This allows you to actually map the access points that are creating the wireless networks around you, pinpointing them sometimes to a particular building or even a particular room in a house. Now the interesting thing about this is it also gives you information about the access point itself, the, the channel it's on, the security it's using, which could indicate vulnerabilities like being an open or WEP network. Now, Google got in trouble for collecting this information a long time ago when they were creating their Google Maps Street View project, where they had a sniffer on their cars that were driving around collecting the imagery that was also collecting GPS information and wireless information about the wireless networks that they were passing. Now, this allowed them to offer more accuracy in Android phones because the phones are able to recognize where you are, say, in a crowded area like a city where the GPS signal might bounce off the buildings, by determining your location by the signal strength of nearby wireless networks that have been mapped to a particular coordinate. Now, what this means is that your phone knows where these wireless networks should be. So if it detects a certain pattern of wireless networks nearby, it knows relatively where it is. Now this is really useful, and it is just one of the applications of war driving data. We can take this information and use it to audit an area, find our location, or use a whole bunch of other things like NAVSOP, which is the military's new program of using, it's called signals of opportunity, to navigate when GPS is not available. Now in order to get started mapping wireless networks and using war driving, you'll need to have an Android phone, because unfortunately, Wiggle Wi-Fi, the application we'll be using, isn't supported on iOS devices. So, let's begin. Now the best way to think of Wiggle Wi-Fi is kind of like it turns your phone into a Wi-Fi locator. Now what this means is if you were to go to a local Starbucks, you would probably on your phone or your laptop only see one wireless network. But in fact, most different places like a school or a coffee shop that provide Wi-Fi will have a couple different extenders that are providing a boost to the signal. Now here we can see that Google Starbucks actually has two different networks, and that's because these are each extenders that are keeping the signal strong throughout the store. Now you can't see that kind of information on a normal device uh, without you know, using a program that shows you everything because it's not really convenient or helpful for the normal user. But for us, if we're looking for maybe a vulnerable one or something like that, it'll give us a, a more clear advantage. Now on the left side, you can see a series of icons, and in general, if the, uh, if the network is not green, then it's either an open network or there's something wrong with it, and depending on whether it is red or green in the signal strength will indicate whether you are close or far away from it. Pretty simple to remember, and the signal strength might be a little confusing because the low signal strength actually, or rather the low signal to noise ratio means you're closer to a network. Now, if we tap on any of these individually, we can see all kinds of additional information, including where we've seen it on a map. We can see the MAC address, and from the MAC address, we can even see a guess as to what the manufacturer is, which is really helpful to determine maybe if the same company was used in all the different networks um, around the area. Uh, for example, we could be at a school that uses all the same hardware, and that could be useful to maybe find a vulnerability in this particular uh, network. Now, going out of this menu, we can also take a look at the settings to determine what would be the right way for us to go about maybe setting this up to not drain our battery, because this will do so if we set it to scan nonstop. But we want, if we want to be aggressive, we can adjust the settings of the scan here to see how often we want to take readings in order to get our position and also the networks around us. Now, if we go ahead and go to the next setting, which is the dashboard, this will give us kind of a heads up of the area and tell us how many new networks are around us, how many we found in this particular run, and other statistics about uh, the current information we're receiving. If we've seen something we want to go back to, we can go to the search part and go through uh, the query section here to type in anything we want to find again. In this example, we'll find a network name, Google Starbucks, and look back through our observations to find all the network extenders with the name Google Starbucks that we've located. And we can see where we, we have observed them along the way as well. 
This is really useful for overviewing our own database without having to rely on external information. Now when we start driving, we can see on the map that as we go, the number of networks that we've seen uh, is populated with a little bubble. Now that's really helpful because we can see high density areas, and as you can see when we got stuck at a light for a second, we gathered almost 100 networks by just sitting there. Now as you go along, it's not just the little bubbles you have access to on the map, you can also zoom in to see more specific information, and even tap on the bubbles themselves which will reveal the names of the networks that you are passing by. This is really cool, because if you're war driving, you can see results live and get an idea for how many networks are in a given area. And as you can see in our dashboard here, we can see that we're moving and we've even detected cell phone towers. Now this is super cool, and we can find a couple by going into the sort options and then sorting everything. In this case, we'll just go ahead and sort by crypto, which means whether it's a WPA, WEP, open network, or w, even a WPA1, which is a little bit rare. Here we've found a cell phone tower and we can even see who operates it and how many other observations we've had, which is cool because we can even see the frequencies of the tower and indicate whether or not it's uh, AT&T or you know, something else. Now the last thing we'll do is actually look for a vulnerable network by driving around in a high density area and removing all the settings in the filter that show us WPA, open, and cell networks. Now this will only leave WEP networks for us to find, meaning if anyone is operating an insecure WEP network in the area, we should be able to find it as we drive. So after driving around for a little bit, uh, we can see we found a lot of networks, over 9,000, and here we go, there's actually a vulnerable WEP network, which we can tap on and see the two observations we've had, and even the type of router, the manufacturer, which is in this case an Aris uh, group router, that uh, belongs to the vulnerable uh, device. Now that's pretty cool that we can just drive around and find a vulnerable network in basically no time at all. So Wiggle is a really powerful app for anyone who wants to do Wi-Fi exploration. After you complete your scan, you can go ahead and upload the results to wiggle.net and view them on a much larger map. Here, you can see that we've logged in and we can actually see the results from the scan we did earlier. We can even go ahead and click on the satellite to see all the various businesses and other things around where we found results, and zoom in to see the individual names of the networks where we found them. Now this is pretty cool because we can even begin to infer the names of some of the businesses that aren't listed because of the names of the networks that we've detected while driving by them. Now if we go ahead and zoom out, we can see that when I switch back to the map view, we haven't found a ton of information about this area because we only drove down a small stretch. But if I uncheck only discovered by me as a filter result and run the search again, we can see that we were definitely not the first people to war drive in this area. In fact, people have all gone all the way down these side streets and greatly improved the accuracy of the results, even of the results that we were able to record ourselves, by making multiple observations of the same networks. Now this is great because it generally improves the results that we get by feeding in information other people have contributed. Now there's a lot of great stuff we can do with Wiggle, and in general, the first people the thing that people want to do is go to the search here and type in their own wireless network to see if it has been war-driven. Now a good way of doing this is go to the BSS or sorry to the SSID, but you can do in the advanced search a very quick name maybe for FBI stakeout fan and run a search here. Now, as you can see, there are more than 85 pages of networks uh, of various types of caps blasting that all include FBI stakeout van. So it is not that unique of a network. But if yours was more individual than that, or if you were to run your BSS ID, you could very quickly see whether or not your network had been logged before. In fact, you can click on the map here and it'll show you exactly where this particular network has been logged. And this is useful because if you want to restrict it to a specific area, Los Angeles maybe, you can go ahead and run it here. Mm, let's update our search parameters first. There we go. So this creates a box in Los Angeles and we can query to only find networks within this area. So now when we look at a result, we can only find FBI stakeout vans in Los Angeles, if that were the search we were to run. There we go. So now we only have results in Los Angeles of FBI stakeout fans of, oh man, there's still 103 of them. So 
Another interesting thing you can look for is hotspots. So if I look for iPhone, I can do a query in the Los Angeles area, and in general, I can find maybe some hotspots that are gen being generated by an iPhone. We can even type in search terms like hotspot in order to make the search more specific and try to find people that are generating a hotspot from a device in order to go after maybe where someone's been. Now the advantage of this would be, would be in identifying a user's hotspot by their BSS ID and then looking for every place that they've been logged before. Now there's not a ton of different war drivers who do this, but it's still an interesting application of war driving. Now one very useful thing about Wiggle is it can also search for BSS ID or MAC addresses specific to certain devices. Now, Wiggle was in the news for being able to search for the manufacturer of a certain adult toy, and it allowed users to basically query every different location that this had been found. So here you can use the first three octets of a uh, MAC address in order to search for any particular device you're looking for. Finally, if you're interested in information that's been gathered by everyone, you can see statistics over time about the way Wi-Fi encryption has changed, and even about the names that people are giving their wireless routers around the world. Now here you can see that Xfinity Wi-Fi is the most common at 2% of all wireless uh, access points worldwide, but you can also see that other ones like FBI stakeout ban and other kind of joke uh, SSIDs are pretty common as well. Now this is an interesting application of all the data, but you can even go in and see how WEP networks have declined over time and other interesting information that's been gathered from all these unique wireless networks in the database, of which there are currently 475,898,758. Wiggle Wi-Fi and Wiggle.net are able to map and discover all kinds of devices that create wireless networks. Now this might be things that you expect, like access points and cell phones that are creating a hotspot, or it might be things that are a little bit more abstract, like adult toys that involve hotspots that allow you to connect to them. Now while that might be funny, and something that Wiggle.net has been in the news for, it also means that you can detect devices by manufacturer. That means it's easy to track down things like uh, security cameras or other devices that might be more sensitive. So if you're looking to improve your security, there's not a lot you can do, but you can attempt to turn down the power on your devices if they allow you to do so in the default settings. Now by default, most manufacturers will set this all the way up so the signal strength is really high, but you can always attempt to log in and turn it down because it might improve your chances of not being detected. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'd love to hear your feedback on Twitter if you have any on the show. We'll see you next time.